It just takes a moment. I tested it, I just changed one final thing. But it's working, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I did that in Argentina too, you saw it before. Anyway, like I said, it was working. So, um, yeah, that's me. Um, this is not the first time I'm doing this talk. I did it in Argentina already. It's just, Dach was there. Um, yes, in Argentina, we met. Wonderful. And then I did it again in Essen. Um, no, it was not. I'm not sure. In Germany somewhere. Um, where, where we had a meeting. Um, so, the, it's going to be slightly different this time because this is supposed to be a cross distro development room and it's, um, I'm hoping for it not to be um, only Debian specific. So if there's anybody in the room um, who knows stuff about auto distributions and you say, oh uh, yeah, we have something similar in Fedora or Red Hat or SUSE, I, I don't know, um, I expect you to interrupt me and to tell me uh, and the rest of the audience uh, that yes, this particular feature is also available for that other distribution. Um, the idea is to learn from each other, so let's do that. So I need your help for that. Thank you very much. So um, the first thing I would like to talk about this is uh, yeah the the main of course the main focus of the talk is, is to see how you can uh, improve the use of your distribution or, or or your use of the system if you're a power user. The first thing I would like to talk about is called update alternatives. Um, let's assume you have something in a distribution um, that many packages provide. For instance, an, an X terminal application. There's X term, there's URXVT, there's RXVT, there's console, there's GNOME terminal, there's hundreds of, of well, probably not hundreds, but a lot of packages that, uh, that provide similar things. Um, and as if, if you depend on one of those, as a as a packager, you don't really care which one is being used in the end. It's the user who cares most. And the distribution may provide a default, but you may be a, 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 want to, to update those defaults at some time. <laughs> um, that's what update alternatives is for. Um, how do we do this in the external example? By calling this command as root, we can just say on a system specific level, um, we wish to change the default and then rather than X term, which I believe is a default, I'm not entirely sure, you could say I prefer URXVT instead. And then whenever a package calls URXVT from a, from a menu, or, uh, so, sorry, wishes to call an uh, external emulator from, an, from a menu or something, then URXVT is called rather than X term. So that's a very easy way in Debian to, to, to modify it. I don't know, maybe somebody has, uh, can tell me whether something similar exists in all distributions. Wonderful. Look, I didn't even know that. Uh, like I said, I'm a Debian guy. I'm not a Red Hat guy, so I really don't know other, other distributions all that well. Um, more documentation, of course, in the man page. Um, it's not very difficult to use. This is just one to start. Um, something more interesting is um, the package stat override. Uh, let's imagine you wish to limit access to writing CDs to just a group of users. Because you've got um, a multi-user system that 500 people can SSH into and you have an S a CD burner there because sometimes you need to write files and you don't want some random joker to start updating or start writing to your CD drive uh, just because he's got an account. Um, well, what you could do, the easiest way is to do something like this um, where you just revoke execute permissions from the authors group and then create some CD writers group and uh, make sure that only the people who are actually allowed to write are in that group. That's a perfectly reasonable way to do this. The only problem with that, of course, is that once you do an upgrade of your package, um, the packaging system will say, oh, this, the permissions here are wrong, so well, let's just fix that. Um, and then everybody can write you a CD drive again. So you don't want to do that. Uh, instead, what you can do is you use the package that override in this way. So you just say, we wish to override. Um, dash dash update is just the way to say, um, if you have something created, uh, change it. If you don't create it, um, then we have add, and then we say root CD writers. Uh, sorry, my uh, slight mistake. Dash update means uh, also sync with the file system. My mistake, sorry. So add means add it to the database. Update means update the, the actual file on the file system. Then we say the permissions which we wish to create, and then the file which we wish to modify. Now, every time we have an upgrade, um, the package will see the stat over our database and will actually update the file as it is specified in the database rather than what it thinks is the best. Um, again, does anybody have something to add here? Nothing exists in other distributions? Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, of course, more information on that is in the package that override. Um, it's, it's also fairly easy to use. Of course, you can abuse it to, some ex to the extent that, for instance, you could revoke um, root the ability to start bash and then everything starts breaking. But you do not wish to do that, of course. Um, right, next chapter. Uh, every distribution, of course, has a way to search for packages. And the most well-known way is to do just app cache search in Debian. Uh, presumably, other distributions have similar things. Uh, the idea here is that you give a few keywords, and then the packaging system does a full text search on maintainer names, um, package names, uh, descriptions, whatever. It works, but it is a limitation. For instance, Enrico Zini used to uh, brag about his, well, not brag, but used to, to, to tell us that, well, if you search for image and editor, you get all kinds of things, but what you don't get is GIMP. Because it says picture and, and stuff like that. So you don't get the GIMP as an image editor, which is fairly problematic, because if you're looking for an image editor, the GIMP really is what you're looking for. Um, so, the, yeah, if you can also have a very complex search, which would yeah give you a lot of results. Uh, again, Enrico, who, by the way, wrote dev tags, uh, likes to say then if you have so many results, uh, once you get beyond 15 or 20 or something, your brain goes banana because you just can't keep up with all the results. So the, the idea of depth text is to, to structure that a bit more. Um, you have a bit more fine-grained searching where every package gets a tag, um, or multiple tags actually. You can have tags about what language it's implemented in, what user interface it's using, um, what kind of package it is, what it tries to do, uh, and stuff like that. Um, on average, packages usually have about 10 to 15 tags, so there's lots of properties you can search for. Um, then there's something that, well, you can actually do that tag search. Uh, so you, you enter that command, and then you, you get a list of, of, of things you can, uh, you enter a number, number of properties, and, and you get uh, the uh, list of packages. I was going to demonstrate it, but unfortunately, my laptop decided to have its, um, if somebody, let me show what the problem is. Now, if there's anybody who can tell me why this totally useless error message is supposed to end up here and tell me what is wrong, and that I would really appreciate it. But it means I cannot install DevTex because I haven't installed this morning, and there's no networking for me here, so I can't demonstrate anything, uh, which I was supposed to do. But it's, yeah, it's, you, you can do DevTex search um, or, or DevTex tag search, which allows you to search for tags, then you do that, that, that tag search with a list of tags, and it gives you a n number of packages that tells you uh, wh which packages, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, you get a list of packages that are uh, uh, in, in those tags. Um, and yeah, the, the final example was GoPlay. GoPlay is an application that uh, lists all packages that are actually games based on dev tags, and it sorts them and it gives you a screen interface. Would also be nice to give you a demo on that, but fortunately that's not gonna happen. Um, anyway, is there something similar, again, in other distributions? Nobody knows? This is not turning, yeah, sorry? Yeah, some, something fine-grained searching, or maybe something related to searching, I don't know. Like I said, what I thought was that most distributions do, yes, over there? I'll, I'll just repeat the question. So your question was that if you create a Debian package, whether it is necessary to enter the Debian tags yourself in there. Uh, well, you can do that. In the Debian control file, you can add tags, um, and then the, the control, the, they, they will work. Um, but you don't have to do that. It's not required for policy currently. Uh, for packages in the official Debian archive, um, uh, Enrico has set up a website where you can manually add, uh, add Debian tags, uh, where users can add Debian tags. Uh, so um, of course, these are verified so that we don't get crap in there. Um, but basically, it's, it's, it's mostly a separate process for, uh, for now. But for instance, in Aptitude, you can also search on that text since about, I think that's a new feature in Lenny, I'm not sure. Yeah? Don't you think that, that, don't you think that initiative could be uh, used cross distribution? Because in fact, all, 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 all the stuff you are doing here is putting some metadata around uh, the upstream application. Absolutely. Which could be shared across a large number of distribution, and each could implement or not 
a right. way to search through those tags. That is absolutely true. Um, just for one thing, to make one thing clear, I did not write that tags. I'm just mentioning it. Enrico wrote it. Um, it's absolutely true, and Enrico did indeed write that tags in not just a distribution independent way, but also independent of packagings as a whole. It's just a system to tag. It's lib tags, I believe it calls it. Um, and you can apply it to anything. So it's just a library, and absolutely, other distributions could use it, provided they would use the library. Uh, it's, it's fairly, fairly generic. Uh, it's just a system to, I think you have a hierarchy of tags, and things can have th one or more tags applied, and you can search for them. That's basically all the library gives you. So yeah, absolutely, no problem. OK. So um, the project website is Deptax Alley of Debian Org. You will find all information on the tags uh, on that website. Um, yeah, the package Deptax and the package GoPlay in Debian will allow you to look for the, yeah, what Deptax actually can do. <laughs> Uh, grep available is another tool to search. Um, this is useful if you know some things about a package. For instance, you know who made it, or you know um, that it's w what source package it was built from. Um, grep available will go to the index file that app downloads, which is called the available file in Debian. Um, list of all available packages rather than just the installed packages. And it will just grab through it, which is possible because it's just a plain text file in Debian. Um, of course, there's a bit more because if you s find a match, then it will get the entire block with, uh, of, of, of information, and can, you can get some useful information from that. Um, so you can search by, by control fields, and you can some, some get some information. This is just a very simple example. This, if you run this on a, on a Debian uh, system, it will give you a list of all the packages that I wrote, or that I maintain. Well, we, what do we do here? We say grab available on the field called maintainer with that data, which is my debian.org email address, and then you just show the package, as for show the package. So that's very easy. Slightly more complex example. Um, we wish to s find all kernel images on the system that are from the 2.6 source. So we do grab available, field the source package. Source is just the, 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 the control field for which source package we're from. The name we're searching for is Linux-2.6. But we also, this is just a Boolean operator and field package, must contain the word image, because we're looking for a kernel image. We're not looking for modules, packages. We're not looking for firmware that might have or might not have been split away. We're looking for kernel images, so image. And then we show the package name. And that will give you a list. I can do this. That's not a problem. I think I have grab available installed. A, a very little question. Sure, go ahead. Does it also search in installed packages? Um, yes. I don't know where you are, sorry. Right there, oh, sorry. Yeah, it, it does search for installed packages as well. Um, the, the available file contains all available packages. There's also uh, an installed, which is a separate file, which contains all the installed packages, but they're all duplicates of the available. That's so, yeah, absolutely. Um, what it, I'm not entirely sure whether it will also search for packages that are no longer available to be installed newly, but are still installed in the system, uh, aka outdated packages. But um, the uh, package that contains this program uh, also contains other grep tools uh, to search in those files. Grab available is just the default one. Slightly more complex version, we can also s uh, ask it to give information about the version just by adding extra fields. Um, the difference in output here will be if you do this, you just get a list of package names. If you do this, you get a list of um, package names and versions where every, every uh, uh, line is prepended by the, 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 the field name and then you get the empty lines in between. So the formatting is slightly different because you've got more fields and you, we need to know which fields uh, is which. That's all. Um, so the package is the control tools and yeah, there's grab available man page if you need to. Yeah, to. Um, can we compare this against uh, something in other distributions? Yeah? Can we have a microphone? Sorry. <laughs> Don't kill people. <laughs> Uh, about two years ago or so, I created a, a client server system for NetBSD and the package source that uh, also have a um, field to be searched in and uh, mm -hmm. a list of search strategies. Uh, all this is based on dictionary-based protocol. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you'll listen about it. So the question is, what do you think in general about client-server approach? Um, 
I don't know, actually, to be honest. Um, I think it might be a good idea. Um, you, so if I understand you right, you say that there is a client server, uh, a dict server for packages in NetBSD, or did I get, uh, uh, get that wrong? Package service is cross-platform, so... Oh, right, 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 right. Um, well, it might be useful. Um, it might not be useful. It depends on what you want to do with that, I guess. Um, this is just uh, um, just one way to, to search on the, the, the index files that are available on your system. Um, the, uh, the upside of doing this is that it allows you to search for only those packages that are relevant for the installed system. Whereas the downside is that if, if there is something in the unstable uh, package, uh, sorry, in the stable archive and you're running stable um, and you might want to know about that. Of course, for a source-based distribution, the requirements are different because you can just install uh, the latest version. My system, PKG online, mm -hmm. uh, may search in uh, so-called source summary and binary summary. Oh, right. Binary summary is something like uh, Debian uh, repository. Right, right, right. right. So it's, uh, actually it may be adapted for Debian easily. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, sounds cool. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Um, Right, the next thing is about, well, there are ways to fool a Debian package system. Um, of course, I should not have to remind anyone that if you start f messing with a packaging system and the thing s uh, stuff breaks, that, um, well, you should be prepared to unbreak it yourself. Um, if it breaks, you get to keep both pieces, let's put it that way, right? Um, but anyway, you can do lots of cool s uh, stuff with it. Let's say you have um, a laptop with an ugly NVIDIA um, screen driver, and y you still want to see something. So you want to install the binary module from uh, mvda.com. Now, of course, if you do that, um, it wants to install a libgl. Um, and you may be running some get free game from Debian, which also needs libgl. So it depends on the Mesa GL library that's in Debian. So it also wants to install libgl. Um, which is fine, you just install libgl, Mesa GL first, and then you install uh, NVIDIA, and it overrides the, the, the GL uh, library, and everything's fine, until you do the upgrade. And then, well, hmm. Now suddenly you've got, still, you've got the Debian GL again. Um, now, of course, this, there is a, a, an NVIDIA package in all free in Debian, which you can install, which will nicely avoid that issue, but let's say it's, it's not recent enough or something. Um, then we're still at this problem. Um, so what we can do instead, <coughs> Excuse me. What we can do instead is to uh, just use dpackage divert um, to tell dpackage that we, yes, we know there's a file here, but we actually want it on a different location. Uh, so what we do here is we tell um, dpackage that whenever it finds this file name in one of the packages, rather than installing it at that location, we wish for dpackage to install it at this location, which is libgl.so.debian. Um, the dynamic linker will not find that file. Nothing else will actually. But by doing this, we make sure that no package upgrade will override the libgl from NVIDIA. So our binary dri only driver still works. Of course, it has some issues. For instance, if uh, some other package then uh, needs to depend on at least a specific version of libgl, then, well, this will still break. But uh, you will not have the problem when, where uh, upgrading the package removes your binary version. So that can be useful, right? Um, it is important, of course, that when you do this, you first dpackage divert everything away and only then install the NVIDIA binary module. Otherwise, this file will be the NVIDIA uh, version rather than the Debian version. Right, yeah. Uh, if I have my, my own package that uh, override, uh, I want to override the binary. Mm -hmm. um, what can I do? Uh, I can use dpkg divert in my post install scripts. Um, yes, you can. Um, but there are there are specific things you should be aware of. Um, they're mentioned in Debian policy. I don't think it's the right place to go into right here. But you can, yeah. It's, yes, it's of allowed. course. I, I mean, uh, without creating a conflict. Yeah, right, right. You can, you can do that. It's 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 allowed. It's allowed to do this. Um, but of course, if you divert the file away from another package, then you should make sure that the interface is the same, because other people will start 
filing bugs against the original package, and then this maintainer will yell at you um, with good cause. Um, uh, there are so there are certain things to, to look out for, but yes, it is it, it it can be done, and it is done in certain cases. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, again, yeah. One 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 final thing: you cannot use this for configuration files. Um, because configuration files have a totally different mechanism of ensuring that changes are not overwritten and they conflict. So do not try this. If you do that, then everything will break. Having said that, are there any similar things in Red Hat based machines? Yes. Oh, microphone. Sorry? So, uh, question about the uh, divert. Can you revert? So that means uh, you don't want any more of the NVIDIA. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just, you I do? think it's, it's deep package divert that just removes something. It's, it's, it's just a standard, I don't know by heart. Let me check that okay, one. That's just remove. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Thanks. Yeah, it would be silly not to be able to do that. <laughs> You said um, I should not use this for uh, configuration files. That's right. Uh, well, my colleague does it. <laughs> I will <laughs> say it to him. But uh, I use update alternatives for configuration files. Is that a better way? Or is there a third way that's okay. Okay. recommended? Um, alternatives uh, are installed by the package themselves, always. Um, well, you can install local alternatives, but that's not what it's meant for. Um, and if you do that, what you have then basically is at the, the place where the configurations file is, uh, then you get a symlink rather than the file itself. And the symlink points to it actually in ETC, uh, to a sim other symlink in ETC alternatives, which is m m m managed by, by the alternative system. And that second symlink then points to the file you're actually modifying. Um, so it is clear from the start that the alternative system, well, if you have that file there, that you have an alternative. And every no, no package would be able to install a regular file there. It would have to install an alternative and get to get it done that way. If you use deep package divert, what you do there, it's actually a bit of a hack. What you have is, um, there's a file there, and it's supposed to be there, and it's not an alternative, the file is just there. But we tell deep package that, yes, we know the file is there, but push it away. Do it, push it away, and I, I get to be first. Um, with the alternative system, you as a system administrator will be able to modify that. With the diversion system, not so much. Um, so, that, that's, that's, the that's the main issue with it. It's, it's less flexible. Um, the, what, what usually happens with configuration files, if you have local changes, local modifications, and you have an upgrade, I think everybody who uses Debian has seen this once or twice, at least, um, you will, you will, you, the package will tell you, I've got differences here. What do you want to do with Do you want to, to update the file? Do you want to keep the changes? Uh, do you want to postpone this? So, there's, there's basically a protection for, for modified files. It contains checksum and everything. So that is, that is an entirely different thing. And that's what's usually used for, for configuration files. If you want to change that there, then use that. There's also a, a way to do this for generated files, which I will not go into now because that will be a bit of out of scope for the talk. But um, in any case, the important thing to remember is that the package effort really is not meant for configuration files, and that would break. Uh, and we're running out of time already, so I'll go on a bit. Um, or any more questions? Uh, because yeah, this talk was originally done in Argentina in about an hour. And now I have 45 minutes, and I wish to have more input from you guys. So I'm expe expecting not to be able to finish. So um, right, more information information is in the deep package divert man page, which you've, which you've seen a few moments ago. But um, right, deep package repack um, is also a bit of a hackish system. Um, I've got an, an example here, but uh, I'll give you another example afterwards. Let's say you've got um, a f some game uh, for Linux, which the game writer company um, yeah, packaged for you, and you don't have to install it manually or anything. Wonderful. It doesn't happen all, all that often. Um, it's not a free game. There's no source for it, but you like it, and you like playing it. I mean, we all do sometimes, right? Um, but then the bad thing happens. You lose your CD-ROM. It gets scratched. I don't know. Somebody steals it. And the, ca the company you wrote the game goes bankrupt, and you can't find a replacement. Sorry? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Loki, you're right. Yeah, gotcha. Well, it can happen. <laughs> Things like that happen, right? Um, now, you buy a new computer, and you wish to install that game there, too. Um, well, you don't have the original install installation media anymore. Um, you can't buy a new one anymore. 
what you could do is you could say, um, I copy all the files there, but then you're back to what you didn't want to do, and w which was great because you had this package here. Um, now, what you could do instead is you use the package repack um, on the system where the package is installed. Just to deep actually pack the name of the, of the package, and it will regenerate the Debian package for you so that you can install it somewhere else. Which is nice, right? What will happen if you uh, change the configuration file? Uh, that's a very good question, and that leads me directly to my next example, um, which is not here. Um, Indeed, if you do that, then the updated configuration will go in the, in the package. Um, and this can be a good thing if you have 20,000 systems and you wish to install them with pre-configured uh, stuff. What you could do then is you use the package repack after you configured one system to update, the, to create modified packages of the packages you have installed on that system and then you can install them on the other systems. Um, which could be a, an interesting way to, to, uh, to maintain a large number of systems. Thank you for that question. <laughs> Uh -huh. um, if, if you're deliberately modifying the package, would you not want to add a uh, change log entry and bump the version? Does the package repack have that option? Uh, I don't think so. I haven't checked that. Um, yes, maybe you would want to do that. Um, this is more of an example of something where, uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a quick and dirty solution. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's not, if, if you really want to do this well, um, then you would probably just download the source and modify it in the source itself. This is a quick and dirty solution, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Does it also work if... Um, Take the microphone. Uh, microphone, microphone. <laughs> Does it also work if the original packager um, uses RPM or some... Uh, no, this is, this is Debian yeah. specific, right. Um, maybe there exists something for Debian, if somebody can tell me, I don't know. Uh, for, for Red Hat, I mean, excuse me, for Red Hat RPM packages? No? It depends on what exactly means, uh, what exactly the package repack does. Okay, what it does is it uh, fetches the metadata information from the uh, dpackage database. It fetches the files that, according to the metadata information, are owned by this particular package, and then just builds that package with that information. Uh, it takes the, the, the posting scripts and the, the brain scripts and everything. I'm aware uh, about one project that uh, make um, Debian up to Solaris uh, hooks and uh, other packages from a list of files. Mm -hmm. So uh, get a list of files and the next step is to create uh, a package. It could be, and do you know the name of this project? Huh? Do you know, the, for the benefit of the people, what is the name of this project? Check install? <laughs> Check install? No, no. That's, some, that's something else, actually. There is another. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it exists. Let's, put, let's keep it there. Um. Right. Um, I, I thought I'd pull this out. Apparently, I haven't. EPM. Um, sorry? EPM. EB, EPM. EPM. Okay, EPM. Wonderful. Um, Excuse me. There's a question over there, sorry. A uh, question about Debian repack. If you repack a package and there is an update available... Uh, then you lose your changes. Lose so the if you... It will be if, updated. If, if you... If you um, well, that is to say, if, if you have changes in the config file, um, then the configuration file uh, protection will kick in. Uh, no, it won't actually, sorry. No, yeah, then you lose your changes. Um, so uh, you need to be careful then not to upgrade from standard Debian sources, so that you need is something you need to, need to, need to worry about. Yeah, thank you, thank you for that question. Um, so, equivs. Um, equivs basically is uh, a way to quickly build a package. Um, I have an example of why this could be useful. Um, so, you've got some mail transport agent that's not packaged in Debian and you wish to install it, and then you install cron, and that also pulls in a mail transport agent. So, what we do is we install a package that claims it provides a mail transport agent, so your source-based installation actually works. Um, of course, you could just build a Debian um, package the regular way, the hard way, by writing all the files. What a quiz does for you is it uh, generates a template that you can modify, uh, and based on that template, it just fills in all the missing bits and pieces based on what, you, what yeah, on defaults, uh, so you don't have to worry about them. It's, if you use equivs to, build, to upload something to the Debian archive, then this will be probably rejected because you've got uh, boilerplate defaults in there. But if you just want to do something like this here, then it really doesn't matter. Um, 
it's just a simple tool to quickly build a package. Um, it's in this package, and if you read, um, equips build is the, the package that will actually build the package based on the template, and equips control will generate the uh, actual template that you can build off um, that gives you enough information. Now I'm quite sure, yeah? Maybe give the mic. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't think it exists for Red Hat or Fedora. It's quite easy to build, I think. But I'm wondering: is it only for provides, or can you also use it for require? So that you say you can. Uh, and I believe, uh, actually, Enrico, whom I told about earlier, gave me an example of what he was using. He's got a package that he built with um, Equifs called uh, Enrico Sanity, which conflicts with all the packages he hates. <laughs> so. <laughs> Whenever, whenever some package is installed, then Enrico Sanity gets removed, and that's a very good explanation. So yes, you can do that. Um, right. How much time do I have left? About 10 minutes, I guess. Um, yeah, slightly less anyway. Uh, yeah, let's see. If you have um, installed a number of packages, uh, right, and you need to update it, uh, you're running Debian Unstable, um, and you have a package that often tends to go kaboom and whatever, um, and you wish to make sure that you don't blow up your entire system every time you upgrade, then this could be useful. Um, AppListBox is the first of these. Uh, so this is actually a whole procedure. You install it. Then what, before, so the pack, the, before the package is even downloaded, AppListBox is called as, as part of a hooking app, which will go to the Debian bug tracking system and give you all the release critical bugs um, on this particular package. Um, so you can review that and then decide whether or not you wish to download the package. Because if you see that um, there's one release critical bug that says um, this package will eat my uh, mother-in-law, um, then you may choose may, may choose to go on anyway. But uh, or you may choose not to go anyway uh, to go on. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, if you choose to go on, then the package or uh, either app get or aptitude, whichever you're using will go on and download the package. And then app list changes is uh, called, which will give you the change log item and or if you have that, and use, uh, if, if the package has that, and use or Debian uh, uh, file. And use or Debian, uh, if, uh, sorry, app list changes is installed by default in Lenny in the mode that, in such a mode that it will uh, only give you the new or Debian um, <coughs> entries, which is only entered when something important changes. Um, but you can reconfigure it so it will also give you changelog entries. Um, every new package upgrade has a changelog entry. Um, so you can review what, which changes were there, uh, which changes were made in this particular package version. Um, then you can choose to decline installing. Uh, it's been downloaded, but you can say, I don't really need these changes. I'll keep it as it is. Thank you. Um, and then, uh, but if you choose to install, then the package gets installed as regular. So this is a very good way to work with Debian Unstable while not blowing your system every time uh, things get upgraded. And I have five minutes left. Do you have uh, something similar? Yes, I heard my uh, name. I, I can say I, I, uh, I, I use Fedora at work, and I can tell you that the Fedora updates, uh, the update uh, program, I don't even know what it's called, uh, will this uh, Will this change? Okay, changes. so this exists in Fedora as well. Um, then presumably in other RPM distributions too, or is this for the only? I don't know. I, I think the, the change that you can list is all the metadata information, and there's a change log. Right, right, so okay. Okay, so this is not something Debian specific, maybe the the bugs thing is, but I don't know. No, there's also metadata for bugs. Okay, I should have removed this then. <laughs> okay, thanks for that information. I've learned something. Wow. Um, uh, maybe one more? And then we're, we're finished. I'll skip the demi menu thing. That's not very interesting anyway. Um, so, OK, let's say you have some game. I don't know if we've, we've tried playing this game, but if you're into real-time strategy, it's pretty fun. It's a free game. It was non-free 10 years ago, but then they decided to GPL it. So let's say you install that, and you want to try it, and you actually you don't like it. But, but the game pulls in several li libraries. Uh, so And you don't like it, and uh, you remove it again. Um, but by just removing this package, the libraries are still there. So what do you do with those? Um, well, you can manually try to track them down and see, uh, do I need to remove this? Oh, no, that, that still uses it. And then you remove the other one. And um, actually, no, um, I still need that. 
and then you forget three or four because you didn't even know they were in there. So what do you do there? Um, that's where these three applications come in. Um, Depth Foster or, an, or Aptitude will track which packages you manually installed and which packages were installed as part of a dependency chain. So that when you remove um, Wazone 2100 afterwards, then Aptitude will see, or Depth Foster will see, um, yeah, I've also installed these five other libraries as part of whatever, and now they're not actually needed anymore, so I can safely remove them. Um, Depth Foster is somewhat more explicit than that, in that it keeps, um, two, uh, uh, in, in, in Depth Foster, the package can have three states. One is, um, it was installed, yes, and we want it. The other is, no, we do not want this, it can be removed. And the third is, we don't know. And whenever Dev Foster finds a leaf package that it doesn't know anything about, it will ask and it will tell you, and then you can say, yes, I want it, or no, I don't want it. Um, so, final one is Dev it, um It uses some heuristics on libraries and tries to guess um, which one you may want or you may not want. Uh, it can be useful if you've never used one of those before. Um, to, yeah, to get a starting point to clean up some old stuff. Um, but of course, since it needs to guess, it's probably going to be wrong at some point, uh, so you may want to keep, be careful there. Same question. Yes, Dark knows. Ha, oh, wonderful. And um, you do know as well. <laughs> well, first of all, I use apt-get on CentOS and Red Hat, so right. <laughs> the first thing will work, but even Yum has uh, the ability to remove uh, Packages that it depends on that are not not dependent. Right, on right, right, right. Um, and also, there's a yum utils package that has uh, actually just tools to do queries on your metadata, which right. also does the the, right, the right, orphan right. packages and stuff like that. Okay, so cool. Yeah. Good. And, and for Mondrivers, I have a, a URPMI option to analyze orphans and to delete them. So they also maintain right, a, right. A, in the database the package you install manually, mm -hmm. and they know when you remove them if all the dependency can be removed or not. So all right, so okay. That's so that's, that's actually basically what, what Aptitude does well. Maybe, and, maybe yeah. taken from Debian, by the way. <laughs> Could be. <laughs> or the other way around, I don't know. Um, right. Other distribution? Oh, somebody over there, right. FreeBSD has a... Oh. FreeBSD oh, free has a package LM leaves. Mm -hmm. which uh, gives you an mCurses interface, right? which shows all the leaf packages that have no dependencies. And then you just tick box uh, all the packages that you want to remove. All right. You say, OK, it removes all the packages. And then you, it goes in a loop where it shows you the same mCurses interface again. Because you now you have leaf. the new right. Uh, right. dependencies, uh, the new packages without right. dependencies. Right. You can very quickly clean up your whole system. OK, good. So. Somebody m over there? Yeah, there's a mic on the way. <laughs> it's actually, yeah, that's, I should have added, it, it's, it's also available in, in Debian. Yeah, you, you were mentioning I'd get out to remove. Yes, that's true. Um, when I originally created, sorry about that. When I originally created this talk, uh, that was 2008, and then I'd get out to remove didn't exist yet. But yes, indeed, um, since then, I'd get has received um, uh, uh, the ability to store that kind of information as well, and now with app get out to remove, you can remove those packages. Thank you for reminding me. I forgot. So yeah, that foster that often, and of, of course. Um, oh yeah, sure. Uh, <coughs> it's not clear for me why uh, Debrafan needs to guess. In NetBSD um, package source system, uh, every package is marked as uh, manually installed or installed as a dependency. So um, not a question. No, yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is uh, with with aptitude and with um, uh, and re recent recent app get that is true. Um, but if you install something manually with app get um, before the version that ha actually had auto remove support, um, then th that information was not available. Uh, so in that case, it had to guess because there was no information on that. Um, and yes, basically, the both is, is slightly outdated now. But if you're using an, an, an somewhat older version of something Debian based, then this could be still be useful. Dag, yeah. um, I also should add that Fedora has a package database, which uh -huh. is not the metadata only, but also all the other information who's uh, helping with the package and, and stuff right. like that. And the orphan is also metadata that is not part of the package, but part of the package database, which is fi found right. online. Uh, presumably, a do an, an orphan in that case, in that sense, is uh, a package that is not really maintained anymore. Yeah, indeed. That is something entirely different yes. than this. Okay. But, uh, sorry. Are there any more questions? Because uh, 
No? No. Because I'm afraid we've run out of time now. Um, I'll skip the final item. Um, thank you for your attention. I've learned some things too. I hope you all have, and uh, see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>